Hi, beautiful. Today we're talking about frizzy hair. It sucks, it's not fun, it ain't cute, and it ain't the thing to have. It probably won't ever be trendy, but listen, there are ways that we can fix the situation at hand. There are techniques that will help you defeat this frizzy hair problem. But first, we have to discuss what is frizzy hair. I'm gonna answer that question, tell you all about how to fix it, what you can do better, what you ain't doing right at all. So if you wanna know what the to do about your frizzy mess on your head. Well, you come to the right place and you've asked the right guy. So let's do it. What is frizzy hair, Brad? When, where, how, why, and what? It's honestly quite simple. It's probably what you exactly what you expected. It's the hair fibers running in all different directions. So the hair fibers are like, no, I'm gonna go over here, and this one's gonna go over here, and I'm just not moving positions. This is where I'm meant to be, okay? Here is a mathematical diagram on how, what that looks like. Let's understand that we have an outermost layer of our hair. The cuticle is that that doesn't give a what you want it to do sometimes. As Miley would say it, it can't be tamed. Sometimes it can be. Oftentimes, it's a little like, ah, no thank you. So when your hair isn't cooperating, when it's all one over here, one over there, boom, bang, bang, boom, I'm gonna curve this way, this one's gonna curve that way, it creates frizz. When all those shingles are laying down flat, it's able to retain moisture, which allows your hair to stay in place and not create extra frizz. But when your shingles are all open, it's all around bad because it's not able to retain that moisture. It's becoming dry and it's becoming more and more frizzy and expanded. I'm glad we got the basics down. I feel good about that. How about you? So let's answer the next question. The next hard hitting question. How does frizz happen? What the f I'm here to tell you. Let's get into the science of it. We have carbon dioxide and um, carbon monoxide and we have uh, CO5. I don't know. I made all that up. Uh, it's actually not that difficult to understand. There are four main factors of frizz. Chemical and heat damage, definitely a big factor. Curl pattern or the amount of curl. We have environmental damage. And can you guess the last one? What do you think the last one is? Take your guess right now. We're a timer right here. You have five, four, three, two. One. If you guessed the diameter of your hair or just how thick the actual fiber is, you'd be correct. Congratulations, you won absolutely nothing today. Let's review what we just went over, but break it all down piece by piece, shall we? Heat or chemical damage. <sighs> You know, I love styling hair, I love coloring hair, but unfortunately, a lot of the times, it's damaging, I'm sorry. So every time you are applying that straightener heat, you are blow drying with a blow dryer that goes up to a really, really high temperature that is so unnecessary, or a curling iron. You're going to be causing damage, which makes it harder and harder to align those hair fibers correctly and have them stay like that. Damaged hair does not like to cooperate and it does like to frizz up and create the hair fibers to be like, you know? And it creates a jungle of mismatched hair fibers that are going one direction and the other direction, which is not what we want. I think we've been over that a couple times today. Curly hair is known for the frizz, the fluff, the stuff. It is tough. Oh, which is a big reason why people that have curly hair swear by the hair products they use. That is because, girl, y'all got frizzy hair, naturally. Because those hair fibers are not aligned all together. You got the waves and you got the curls and you got the some straight pieces, some are bent, some are crisscrossed. That is what creates that big, crazy, frizzy hair, okay? So the curlier, the more coily your hair is, the greater the frizz is going to be. And if you have more than one of these things, I'm so sorry. Environment, okay, so where you live matters, right? Everybody knows this one. If you live in a very humid climate, your hair is prone to being frizzy as you know? Think of the hair fiber as a sponge, right? So every time you go outside in very humid weather, there's a lot of moisture in the air. Your hair is sucking in all of that moisture, okay? It is hydrating itself. And once it hydrates itself, it is sort of breaking the bonds of those styling products you put in your hair, or a lot of it. And what's happening is your hair is becoming bigger and bigger. Because most styling products are water soluble, they are going to end up running out of your hair when there is humidity or water involved 
dissolves on your hair. So the styling products are broken down and your hair becomes big again and frizzy and exactly what you don't want. And lastly, do you remember the last one? Do you remember the one I haven't reviewed yet? The diameter of the hair is also a key player in how frizzy your hair is going to be. Typically, the larger the diameter of the hair is, the thicker the hair, the more difficult it is to style and keep that style in your hair for a long period of time. Like we went over before, frizz is just really created by hair not being aligned all together and it being a crazy force. Remember that diagram I showed you earlier? of the hair, you know, science, you know? So hair that has a larger diameter is going to be more noticeably frizzy and you're going to see those hair fibers more and it's gonna be harder to keep that hairstyle intact after you do say a blowout or straighten your hair or anything to style your hair. You are going to see your frizz a lot more, unfortunately. We've made it to the main performance. This is gonna be all about how to stop that from happening. It's all about not drying your hair out, right? So therefore, let's stop washing our hair every single day, okay? If you do that and you're complaining about your hair being frizzy, girl. What? Stop it. Don't do it anymore. It's not good for you. At least go two days without washing your hair. And if you really must get your hair wet, if you feel the need, the urge, the oh, please, like let me just wash my hair, I will allow you to rinse it. That's as far as I go. You can rinse it and apply some more conditioner, okay? Conditioner is your B, F, 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 especially hydrating conditioners. Anything with a lot of oils in it, things like glycerin are great for your hair. It actually penetrates inside the hair follicle and coats the outside. Therefore, you can fight the frizz better. Speaking of oils, oils are great, okay? Natural oils are the best. If I could bottle this oil from my scalp and sell it, I would, because it's good as hell. So your main goal here is to distribute those oils on your hair strands, okay? Natural bristle brushes are the best for this. However, if you would like to use something that is vegan, you can totally do that as well. Just make sure it is similar to a boar bristle brush. Um, they do make synthetic sort of boar bristle like brushes. So go for something like that. I will link some brushes below for you. Hair products are your best friend. Things that moisturize, things that coat your hair. Those are the things we want on our frizzy hair. Things like oil, Viper, smoothing oil, by X Mondo Hair. Love it. Puts a beautiful gloss on the hair and fights humidity and frizz constantly. All day, every day, baby. Within Viper, we have carrot seed oil, argan oil, and bobab oil, which are all just like a powerhouse at frizz control, baby. We have moisture creams like Electric Rain by yours truly, which has argan oil, proteins built in, and blueberry and apple extracts to really combat damage and deplete frizz. A conditioning mist or spray or whatever you wanna call it, using a conditioning spray out of the shower is going to be phenomenal for you as well. It's gonna pack your hair with that extra hydration it needs, as well as oils and proteins and all sorts of other amazing ingredients. And when it comes to your shampoo, again, moisture baby, oils, give me literally every oil and just put it on my hair and my scalp. That is going to lay your cuticle down flat and keep it flat for longer. Try out Hydroglow Hydrating Shampoo and Hydrating Conditioner. Packed with oils and extracts to ensure the smoothest, sexiest, silky hair. Use a hair mask. And no, it's not like the mask Kim Kardashian wore to the Met Gala. It's like cream that you put on your hair and you leave it there. I actually get asked that question a lot. Like, why do you call it a hair mask? Cause it really coats the hair. Is that why? Is that why people call it a hair mask? Like, I actually don't know. I could call it like a hair cream, but then there's there's hair creams out there. Anyways, hair masks are gonna be amazing. You're usually leaving them on the hair for an extended amount of time. And they have a higher concentration of moisturizing ingredients typically, which means if you're doing this in the shower and your hair is swollen from the heat in the shower, and then you're packing it filled with all of that great nutrients, your hair is going to obtain that nutrients for longer and it's going to be healthier and more moisturized and decrease frizz. Try Prismatic Glow Hydrating Mask. I recommend doing this hair mask weekly, at least once a week. You gotta do it. You gotta keep up with it. If you want that good, good hair, you know? If you really, really, really want less frizz, you're gonna have to not color it your hair. Ever would be best, like don't ever color it or color it a lot less. Let those roots grow in, just hold off 
as long as you can go. If you're a dull process blonde or you do a full head of foils constantly, every month or a couple of months, you're gonna have to slow your roll. Because listen, lightener or hair color in general, it loves to give you frizz. Luckily nowadays though, a lot of hair color lines actually decrease frizz and actually your hair can look and feel a lot healthier after the coloring process. But sometimes you definitely get the opposite. So, you know, just be careful with color or color your hair a little less if you wanna be really sure you're helping decrease the amount of frizz in your hair. Put down the hot tools, the blow dryer, the curling iron, the flat iron. Don't do it. The more you use it, incorrectly by the way, most of you are using your flat irons and your blow dryers at way too high of a temperature and you're literally frying your hair, making it go like this everywhere. It's gonna make it harder to style it in the future and your hair is going to become more frizzy. Don't do it. If you're gonna do it, please use newer styling tools with better technology and don't use them at the highest temperature possible. That is going to fry your hair off. Also protect your hair. Use some force filled heat shield. It protects your hair up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Be more careful when you brush your hair. So when you pull on your hair, you're tugging it like this, you're wrecking it when it's all wet. It is much more pliable. If you pull off a piece of your hair when it's wet and a piece of your hair when it's dry and you stretch both out, you'll see the one that's dry does not stretch at all. And the one that is wet stretches almost double the length sometimes. So you don't wanna be super aggressive with your hair when it is wet. Use a wide tooth comb or gently detangle with a detangling brush that is specially made for that. But do not yank at it because it will stretch the hair fiber out and it will cause damage and breakage and your hair will become all squiggly and nasty and you don't want that because it creates frizz. Frizz is the word we don't say today. If you have extremely frizzy hair, don't be afraid of using things like a pomade or a balm in your hair. Pomades and balms and things like that are not made just for men, okay? It is not just for this kind of hair. It is made for people with extremely frizzy hair. I love to finish my blowouts with some balm. I use my own BDSM balm, Slick and Define balm, and I put a little bit in my hand like that, rub it all around, and just go right on that top layer. That sort of heavier, highly hydrating balm is really gonna help fight against humidity. The heavier the product, typically, it stays on that hair, it really grabs a hold, and it really, really sits on top and does not move. So a hair balm is a perfect way to get that extra bit of frizz down and keep it down. Water is your enemy and also your friend. Because if your hair is extremely frizzy, the only thing that really, really brings it down is some water. Spritz that water on and apply more product. If you have curly hair, try using Wave Tech Wave Foam or any kind of curl foam that you like. So spray it, spray it, boom, boom, boom. And then add your products on top and that will decrease your frizz and give you that fresh look. Be gentle when you're towel drying your hair. Do not go like this with your towel. Absolutely not. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do that. And also use a towel that is soft. If you have those bath towels that are like sandpaper, it's time to retire them. It's time to buy new towels. It's time to buy very soft cotton towels. You know, buy a towel that's just for your hair. There are also towels that are made for hair. You can find a good one for you online and grab it and use it and do not go like this with it. It'll create a lot of frizz and breakage and split ends and all that bad stuff. Stop running your hands through your hair all day. Don't go like this all day, okay? You're gonna add moisture. I don't know if you ever noticed, but your hands have a lot of moisture in them. So when you're going like this all day, obviously you're gonna end up with a lot of frizz. Friction causes frizz. So tie your hair up when you sleep. Put it in a bun, something. Because the more it rubs against that pillow, the more it's gonna go poof. And we want the opposite, we want poof, not poof. Do a bond building hair mask. It actually rebuilds the hair fiber from the inside and healthier hair is less frizzy hair. Honestly, I could go on for days about how to get your hair to be less frizzy. But overall, it's about taking care of your hair better, giving it some love, giving it those beneficial ingredients that are really gonna cure its dryness and its lifelessness. You need to bring the health back to your hair in order for it to cooperate with you. Rebuild that hair, add a lot of hydration, and your hair will thank you. It's also all about testing different products. If you've used a curl product in the past and you didn't get good results from it, well, maybe just that product. A lot of products have very different ingredients or more or less of certain ingredients and there is a perfect product out there for you, I promise. All hair is very different and sometimes needs very different products for certain hair types and textures. So try a lot of things or just read up online, Google some things, find out what is best for your exact hair type and your hair texture and try it out. It's all 
all about trial and error. So that was fun. I hope I can help some of you who watched today's video have less frizzy hair. Nobody wants that for anybody. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Take care of your hair and your hair will take care of you back. It's a very important thing that's attached to your body that you should really take care of. You'd be surprised at how much your hair can affect your confidence. One less frizzy girl. If you don't follow me or X Mondo anywhere else, these are my social media handles as well as X Mondo social media handles. Check us out if you would like some incredible hair care and hair color products. You can also check us out on our website right down below. It has all of the products I listed in today's video and everything you need to know about the product. That is all for today, beautiful. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to live your extra frizzless life and I'll see you next time. Bye.